In this video, I'm going to talk about a pair of mirrors called a miroscope, which are shaped like a clamshell, and they produce an optical illusion. The penny that you see in this picture isn't really there. It's a mirage produced by two concave mirrors. I can poke it with this pen, and the pen goes right through it. Let's see what's really inside. Do you see the real penny down low below it? Let me remove the mirrors. And there's the real penny sitting at the bottom of the two concave mirrors. Let me put the top mirror back on. You can see the image penny. And when I have the camera over, there you go. You see the real penny on the bottom. My camera hardly does it justice. You can't tell quite how three-dimensional it is. But from my perspective, I am really sending this pen right through the penny. Here's an amphibious image. It's a three-dimensional object, this plastic frog. It's a little more spectacular than the penny because it's three dimensions. You can see the real frog on the bottom of the mirrors. You can see both mirrors are reflecting, concave mirrors. I put, the, put it back on, and there's the image of the frog, and I can poke it. All I can do is poke, a, poke it through an image, and nothing happens. If I put this piece of black paper over the hole so you can't see the plastic frog, you might be even more convinced that the image, the mirage, is a real thing. I'll do a ray diagram of this situation. The frog is sitting at the bottom of the clamshell pair of, of mirrors and will trace a ray coming from the frog and find out where its image ends up. Begin with the parallel ray. That is a ray that comes from the frog parallel to the optic axis, hits the mirror, and it will bounce off the mirror and pass through the focal point. That's the first of three possible principal rays. There's the focal ray and the chief ray. Here's a focal ray. It passes through the focal point and the frog hits the mirror and emerges parallel. I show it hitting the mirror and not hitting this straight line back here, which is often done in optical ray diagrams, but this ray is so far outside of the paraxial limit that you really need to have it bounce off the mirror. And these mirrors are parabolic, which means that if the ray emerges from the focal point and hits the mirror, it truly will reflect parallel to the optic axis. To find the image of the frog in this top mirror, which I'm calling mirror 1, which has a focal length of 5 centimeters, I need to find out where these reflected rays intercept, and if they don't intercept any place, then I need to find the virtual parts of those reflected rays. In other words, where do those reflected rays seem to be coming from? And where they intercept, I have the image of the frog in mirror 1, the top mirror, which has a focal length of 5 centimeters. This is a virtual image because it's behind the mirror. There's no real light forming it, but it still serves as the object in the second mirror, mirror 2, which is the bottom mirror and has a focal length of 5.0 centimeters. So now let's image this new object in mirror 2. I'll draw a focal ray, which starts at the object, passes through the focal point, strikes the mirror, and emerges parallel to the optic axis. And then I'll draw a parallel ray, which emerges from the object parallel to the optic axis, strikes the mirror, and its reflection will pass through the focal point of the mirror, number 2, which has this focal point right here, F2. Where these two reflected rays intercept, you have the final image. There are videos that refer to the image in this demonstration as virtual, which is nonsense. Clearly, the image is being formed with real light. It's a real image. It forms right about at the opening of the clamshell. Above it or below it depends entirely on the focal lengths. I guessed these focal lengths. Mirroscopes are actually made from identical parabolic mirrors where the focal point of each mirror is at the vertex of the other mirror. Now here's a puzzler for you. If I shine this laser on the image, it appears as if the laser light is bouncing right off the image. I point the laser directly at it, and that's what happens. Now, if you take a close look at the real penny down below in this still photo, 
I think you might be able to see what's going on as you see the laser beam is ultimately bouncing right off the real penny. It certainly does not reflect off the image. How does a ray move throughout the mirror scope such that it ultimately emerges from the mirror scope right where it hit the penny? Okay, thanks for watching.